Today on Understanding with Michael and Connie Smith. Nobody is living their lives outside of seed time and harvest. No, none of you. You may be living in ignorance of it, but it is affecting you every single day of your life. It's the, it's the law of the universe. It's, the, it's, the, it's the, the kingdom law, the paramount natural law. It's the grandfather of all spiritual laws. And it's found, scripture is replete with the concept. Here it is, verse 25. He that waters shall be watered. That's seed time and harvest. Join us now for today's message. Third John 2, come on, let's read it in all the venues. Let's read it out loud together. Ready, read. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospers. Now, uh, uh, the words even as are the operational words in this verse. It means in proportion to the prosperity of your soul, that's going to determine your prosperity and health. Now, prosperity we've broken down simply meaning that things go well. When, when it says that Joseph was over Potiphar's house and everything he did prospered, it simply means everything went well. When Joseph was put in charge of the prison, it says, and it prospered. It simply means, and things went well. Uh, uh, Psalm 35, 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified, who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. You could translate that as, Let the Lord be magnified, who translate, uh, who translate? <laughs> Let the Lord be magnified, who takes pleasure in things going well for a service. That's, that's all it is. As a matter of fact, if you look up the Greek word prosperity here, it just means good journey. And that's what life is. Life is not a destination. It's a journey. It's a, while, you're sing, while you're growing up, it's a journey. While you're, while you're in your singlehood, it's a journey. You're married, it's a it's journey. You have kids, it's a journey. You have a uh, grown family, it's a journey. Great, uh, grandkids, great. It's a journey. And literally, it just means that you'd have a good journey. Now, how many of you want a good journey in your life? I mean, that, so so he, says, he says, you will prosper, have a good journey, and be in health, even as or in proportion to your soul prospering. Now, the work of God in our lives exists in three phases. Number one, it exists in our spirit. We looked at this on Sunday. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, all things become new. If you, had, if you had a mole on the back of your hand before you got saved, when you got saved, that mole wasn't gone. You, 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 that's not affecting your body. The part of you that was made new was your spirit. The second part of redemption is your soul. The third part of, is your body. Now, your, the redemption of your spirit and the redemption of your body take place instantaneously. The day you make Jesus Lord of your life and you are born again. Man, I'm getting shouting off born again again. I just got to just stay away. All right. Uh, the day you are born of the Word and Spirit of God and you come out of the seed of the Word of God and out of the womb of the Spirit of God, you're no longer flesh. The Bible says whatever is born of flesh is flesh, but whatever is born of spirit is spirit. That takes place instantly. You don't work to get born again. You're not in process of being born again. You are made, you, 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 are, you are translated, the Bible says in, in Colossians 1, out of darkness into His marvelous light. So the redemption of your spirit is instant. The redemption of your body is also instant. The Bible says, uh, we will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. In the moment of twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet Him in the air. And, and it says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, it says, our corruptible flesh will put on incorruptible our mortal flesh will put on immortality, the redemption of our body, and that's really the only part of redemption we're waiting on. That's the last thing. The Bible says the last enemy that shall be overcome is death. Jesus whooped up on sickness. He whooped up on poverty. He gave a Dusty Rose bionic elbow to depression. Uh, he gave a, a who was it? Who, who, some wrestler did the DDT. I don't know who that was. Any wrestling fan? Is Jake the Snake Roberts? All right, brother. Amen. He probably says, hey, Jake Roberts is born again now. He's, he's a born again Christian now. So anyway, I don't, they, they don't even call him the snake anymore. I don't know what they call him, but, you know, Jake the, the angel. I don't know whatever it is, but anyway. Uh, but so, 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 so he, he whooped up on poverty. He whooped up on sickness. He whooped up on spiritual death. Uh, he whooped up on all that. And the last enemy that has yet to be overcome. Now, I, I'm an old wrestling fan. Not real old. Not, you know, not, you know, but I was kind of after the Funk Brothers. But before all this it, uh, uh, Vince McMahon stuff, I was right in there with... Like the with, 80s, 84, Yeah, with Kevin plus. Sullivan and, and Black Jack Mulligan and Gordon Soley and Mike Graham and, and uh, 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 the, you know, anyway, y'all know what I'm talking about. Anyway, the, the good... It, it's not even wrestling, it's wrestling. The good wrestling. <laughs> Mr. Wrestler number one. Okay, anyway, so Mr. Wrestler number two. Anyway, so, so, you know, in a tag team fight, 
he, he hold, the one guy holds him down, and he climbs up to the third rope, to the top, th third rope and jumps down, and, and that's, that's the last thing that's going to happen. Jesus literally put his foot on the devil's neck, tagged us in, said, look, I'm going to sit on the right hand of the Father. Listen, he said, you maintain what I've obtained. He said, I got him beat down for you. Just hold him down. And so what's he doing? He's standing on the top of that third rope. And the last thing that's going to be overcome is death. The last enemy that Jesus will conquer is physical death. So the redemption of your spirit is an instant process. The redemption of your body is an instant process. But the redemption of your soul takes time. And Jesus, by His power, redeems your spirit. Jesus, by His power, will redeem your body. But the redemption of your soul, He has given us the equipment to see our soul transformed. But it comes by our effort to saturate and marinate in the transforming power of the Word of God. Psalm 19, 7 says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The Hebrew says, The law of the Lord restores the soul. What does it mean restored? It gets it back to the factory settings that the manufacturer originally intended. See, the manufacturer never intended lust and pornography and fear, torment. He never intended for any of that to be there. But the Word of God will restore it to the factory settings that, that it was originally intended to do. So, so the reason we're concentrating on prosperity of soul, and that sounds so carnal in religious circles. Why are you talking about the soul? Is this psychology? We're talking about the soul because 3 John does not read... Uh, you'll prosper and be in health even as your spirit prospers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say you'll prosper and be in health even as your body prospers. It says you'll prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And He's taking care of our spirit. He will take care of our body. The only area of redemption we currently have to concentrate on is our soul. So if we're going to see things go well in relationships, it will take place in proportion as things go well in our thinker, feeler, and chooser. If we're going to see things go well in our finances, it's going to be in proportion to how things go well in our thinker, feeler, and chooser. If we're going to see things go well in our, in our jobs or in our ministries, it's going to be, or with our children or anything else, it's going to be in proportion as things go well in our thinker, feeler, and chooser. So if you have poverty of thinking, poverty of feeling, poverty of choice, things are not going to go well. But if you have abundance of thinking, abundance of feeling, abundance of choice, or making rich choices, and I don't mean monetarily, I hate that, prosperous choices, prosperous thinking, prosperous in your emotional life, you're going to enjoy life. Now, you, you show me a person who's bound by insecurity, they're not enjoying life. Show me a marriage that's bound by jealousy, that's an emotional issue, they're not enjoying life. Show me a man who can't choose to turn off the television when, when the wrong programming is on, poverty of choice, making poor choices. He's not enjoying life. Show me a person who's slave to a cigarette uh, 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 that, that just can't decide that, that, you know, I mean, a little three-inch stick determines, I mean, it drives their lives. They're, 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 and, and I don't say this to condemn anybody, but I say this maybe to sober you up in this sense that it determines everything about you. You, you pace the conversation based on when you can get a cigarette. You pace the travel down the road based on when you can get a cigarette. You, you stop, you know, w based on when, you, I mean, it, it literally takes over your whole life. My, my dad, I, I don't know how many years, uh, dad, how many years do you smoke? 25 years or something like that? 